is a little bit different than Apple's cap. Um, this, um, it is also a little bit different name. It is a different species. And the interesting part that the Pears cap can't go from apples and apples cap can't go to pears. This it is a different species. But the big difference from the pears scap is that it um, actually goes quicker to the shoots than to the leaves. And you see pears scap is always under the side of the leaves and apple scap is actually always on the top side of the leaf of the most of the top from the leaf. This is a big difference where you can find them. It is harder to find actually uh, pears scap on the leaves, but you see it always quick on the apples. And I'll explain that why that is. There's, um, Coming in the all, all stages of flowering from early tip, green tip, basically to end of the fruit season, pears cap can occur. This, that's, that's another thing. It is it, it, pears cap technically don't stop, but again, we will see that in the rain pro later on. That's, that's what pears cap look like. Everybody has seen that. And that's in the later stages on the fruit. Um, you see the scarring and it is quite common. Williams is the high susceptible. This, what I said before, the disease circle is, circle of pears is very simple to apple cap. It is, again, it uh, goes much more on shoots and it also survives on the wood. That's probably the big difference. Um, the shoot infections is really interesting on the pears. Um, you find them very quickly, and also they overwinter on that. This, and again, the overwintering ascospores on the leaves. This is from how it survives. It comes on the green tip, comes basically how you get an infection. The spores go in the air, goes on the leaf, come on the leaf in the autumn, you got the spores and then release, and then the full circle. Every year the same. And the neat leaf redness, high humidity, it works always the same. This, again, the shoot infection can provide the fungus to overwinter. And that's also the problem for the pears. And if you look actually on this photo, you can see actually the pears gaps also on the stem of the pears. And that's also how they sit on the twigs. Unfortunately, the pear stem is yellow. You can see it, but on the on the on the shoot, you can't see it so much. But that's how they survive. This winter nails get it really bad, bad, um, and also on bare boss get that really as well. So the, the Williams is the same. It's really bad for black spot. This Peckham's triumph and Peckham's is not so. Safe. Susceptible, but Williams is very um, high susceptible for black spot. And everybody knows that it has all to do with the, temp the time that the leaves and the fruit stay wet to get an infection. And it's very similar at that period than the apple caps. This controlling pears cap, principle of control are very similar to the apple cap. Control is based on protect and spray programs and spray before the rain or before an infection period. And that's where the problems start. We not can always spray before the rain. And we got all the other issues. You can't drive in the orchard. This, this year, you see a more problems with that. This we could using RIMPRO and most people are familiar with it, but I will go through the program and not everything, but um, Rainpro is a scap warning system. It is also what I call a decision tool to make a decision what to spray, when. This, when a pear spore lands on the leaves, that's this. It lands on a pear. Then it goes inside the leaves. And then you get the what we call scap infection. And that's what happens. And that's what you see here. The spores are released. It's released over the leaves. You get an infection. This is when it goes in the leaves. That's a red circle. And these are spore release over the leaves. That's the period that it can affect your leaves or fruit in that matters. On, just for people who are not familiar with Rimpo, this is on apples, but you have lots of spores in spring. We call it primary infection. 
and then they get mature on the bottom. That's the thread on the bottom here. And then you see how they get mature and then we get the next one. And that we, we call that primary infections. Then we got secondary infections and we are in the period at the moment for secondary infections. You see already in quite a lot of orchards, you see already infections on the leaves. You see also um, starting to see it on the fruit. I'm in, I'm in Tasmania at the moment and we just see it on the leaves. Unfortunately for the growers, they didn't see spot, but when I walk in the orchard, I find them. This in, after the first infection, and just is about 19 days, 17 to 19 days, and then you can see the infection. And I always said three weeks, 21 days. This, if you have an infection and you see the first infections on the leaf of fruit, that infection is taking place around three weeks before that. This, it is not the last infection where you see, but it is actually the earlier infections what you see. This, um, there's a misunderstanding for a lot of people. They think that you got straight away on the fruit, but it's actually, you see the symptoms only three weeks later. This, everybody is hopefully clear on primary and secondary, and otherwise ask questions later on. This, the chemical spray program for SCAP, so we focus to get the best possible control for the primary infections. This is from green tip to the end of spring, basically till this period. This, if you have it controlled really well till now, then the season starts to get easier. That is, if you don't have any scab in your orchard or if there is no scab in nearby. Um, scab spores can travel up to 10 kilometers in the air and probably 10 kilometers in the area. This it means that if you think that you are totally free of black spots, that can be, but if your neighbor is having black spot, that means that you have to spray as well. Those spores land easily on your property. This it is in, probably in control through the whole district, not only on your farm. This, we got a lot of arsenals. We got a lot of chemicals that we can use. We that's one good thing in Australia. We have still a lot of fungicides, and there's still a few coming. Um, and then we got also in the uh, for the if you're an organic grower, we got the uh, yeah the bicarb and the sulfas. This we have a little bit of tools, and we got also like serenade, what we can use in the organic as well to kill spores. So, we got quite an arsenal what we can use. The problem is when to use, how to use, and which choice you do. Once you got expensive ones, you got cheap ones, you got the Zara brands that's not so expensive, but also you got also like uh, Dodine, you got actually um, those fungicides are not too, Captain is all right, but we don't use it in this time of the year normally. Um, you got the Mangus app, what a lot of people in Shepparton will use, it's cheap, but it is actually wash off very quick. This, what chemical do you pick? Um, people use topaz, and topaz is very good on mildew, but it's not fantastic on black spot. This, it is a lot of choices, lots of decisions what you have to do, which one you're going to take to control this cap. And again, this is just an example, but you try to spray before this, and this is that infection. There's a protectant is always better than a cure. There's a, a good protection is better than with a kickback. And I want you to stress that out, that everybody to control PS cap is basically protectant, 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 but a good one, not, not when it wash off. And, and this, this is, um, see that the protectants go on first, Dalen, Captain, etc. Um, this is more or less for the organic. You can spray in the rain if you have to, to stop that infection. You can use lime sulfur. And again, you use the boga, topaz, psyllid if you haven't had an infection. And bicarbonate gives also like probably 12 hours uh, kickback. This contacts fungus, everybody knows that. Um, if you do like Captain, we call that contact fungus. Um, Dayland is a contact fungus. You put that on the leaves and we call that a protectant. And that's to 
permanent teeth. That's what you should use so much as you can. Protectants, what we call systemic fungicides. They go easily in the plants and they can go a little bit short distance in the plants to stop that early infections. This, we call that kickbacks. That's what we use. And that's curative that you can do that after infection. The problem with these contact fungicides or systemic fungicides, sorry, I better say that, that it becomes also resistance very quickly. That you have to use it so less as possible. This, this is, uh, we know that um, a lot of orchard PS cap is showing up. And then they say we spray every week or we spray every 10 days. And how is it possible that we get scab? Now, one of the reasons is that it can, the fungicide can wash off. And I'll give you an example. This is up on the Goulburn Valley. Valley. This is somebody sprayed with, with sustain on that day with Mangazap. Very good. There was actually no infections here, but okay, that's fine. You think that's going to last. You think you have a good fungicide. It drops off very quickly to this line. You can see that here. In Rimpo, we got a fungicide cover on the, this side. And the fungicide cover is how much do you have left when you got an infection? In this case, it is actually less than 20%. This it is just holding, just. And um, then you see with the second infection in the same week, and that's what happens this year. You had a second infection this week. And then you see that the, the, basically the mango zap would not hold at all. This, what it means is your cover will be not there, that the infection take place, and you've got black spot on your peers. Even if you sprayed only one, two, three days before that infection, you had a second infection and in straight after it, high leaf redness on the bottoms here, you can see the blue line, rain, and you can see that the mango zap basically did not hold for that infection period. What do you do after this? Is basically that sustain what this grower in particular used here, what was actually wasted, should have been come on here and with a kickback to control this scab. This again, this is one of the problems. The, the, the chemicals are washing off during heavy rainfall. This, this is another problem I see all the time in every area. It is not only in the, in the peer industry, but do we have the right nozzles? Are we getting to the tops of the trees? You only have to miss one branch when you spray, say the wind picks it up. We got high, big old pear trees and you miss one branch or one, then black spots start to occur on those tops. And the problem is when peers get it, these, we get, it's called it secondary infections occurring. Second infections are worse than the primary infections. And you get a spread of, from that top bit, what you missed only one spray, say four or five weeks ago, they starting out sending spores. And then you see that you have higher susceptibility on the other ones. And you only have missed one, one top and that can cause a big grief to, to get black spots in your orchards. Another thing is, I see it so often, um, has the spray be calibrated? Um, not only the right nozzles, but do you have the right pressure? Are you using the, the right rate per hectare? Um, I, I looked actually sometimes at the sprayers and then said, yeah, it is calibrated. We spray 1,000 liters of water, hectare. We put the right rates in. And then I worked it out for them. And then, look, they didn't spray. Um, and one hectare for the thousand liters, this spray actually a little bit more than the thousand liters. But in other words, the underdosing, and that's another problem. Another thing what I find common that people do is spray every second row. It is actually a very bad habit to do. You should spray every row. And also, I have to say that people say, I spray every second row, and then I go back and I do the other second row. Technically, very bad. When you infections can start to occur, the rain washes the spores off and they start going again. And then you come back the next day and you spray the other rows. It is actually better to spray blocks for blocks than going every second row and then come back the next day. There's really important calibration, check on the right rates per hectare. And 
ask yourself, did we have a good government windy conditions? Every tractor driver should basically go off the tractor, let somebody else drive and have a really good look of you really get to the tops of the trees, especially with the old Williams pear trees. That could be a big problem. And it was windy this year. Before the rain, we get always wind. That's a given. Yeah. There's somebody asked uh, fungicide resistance. Um, yes, there could be. Um, there's any fungicide, any, any fungus can build up resistance. And mainly, they can only, you can say, for protectant is very hard for a fungus to build up in, in, um, in resistance. But with the kickbacks like sustain, you can definitely have a problem that it is probably not working in the way it should have been that the fungus get resistant to your fungicides. This, we're coming back to this RIMPRO again. And this, is, this picture shows you why pears are different than apples. But you see apples cap, you saw that and when I showed that first picture, the spores were at 100% and then it goes down. With pears cap, you see the spores, this is new research, new data uh, in RIMPRO. And you can see that the spores is actually building up a little bit, going down, building up a little bit, going up. And this happens through the whole season. And that's a real big difference with apple scab. If you are no black spot, then these spores, of course, stop producing. But if you have any black spot, these spores keep on growing for the whole season. With other words, you keep on spraying for the whole season. Pear scab is also very aggressive, we call that. It goes up always high and quite often much higher than apples in infections. There's the um, more um, higher infections rate than apples. This, this was actually last week, I think, in, in Shepparton. This is definitely from your area. And you see we had two pear infections in one week. And the problem is if you, and I was explaining that, if you spray weekly, you can still have that you have periods that you are not covered with your fungicides. This, this is uh, live in Shepparton at the moment. Today, you guys are all there, or not all there, but at least you can see it. This I'll show first apple scab, and then I'll explain it why we go there. I use this one, and let me show you the pear scab. Can everybody keep a good eye on this? When this explains a lot why pear scab is so different. If you look to the primary infection in Shepparton at the moment, you see nothing. See, the spores are empty. That's all past. And if I click very quickly on the anti years, you see why we don't have spores left in Shepparton. This is your primary infection for your apples is over. Why? We start with a lot of spores in the beginning. You got one infection after the other one. So many infections for the whole year. And then the primary infections run out of steam. Basically, there's no spores left from the leaves, from the ground. And that's why we call that primary infection is finished. That's one story. Everybody understand that. We go back again. And hopefully, it, yes, it comes back. All good. And you click on, this is what you do as a grower. You make a decision. And um, see, but if you think that you got nothing, Click on secondary infections. Look at this. It's a totally different pictures. And what this is, secondary infection, is if you have black spot on your apples or pears, those spores, what you see, what we call black spot on the apple or pears, they're sending out spores, go in the air, falling on the other apple, and that's what we call secondary infection. I say to everybody who actually is in this industry who don't know, Secondary infections are worse than the primary infections. And you see also RIMPRO shows you on the leaf and also on the fruit. The red is on the fruit. This, we are at the moment live. And you can see at the moment, we had a very bad infection for fruit infections. This, it was not on the leaves, but you can see it. That's, that's what you see. This. And RIMPRO, you can see the red data. You go back to the primary. And now we go to the peers. I know that this is a peer workshop, but it is very important that everybody 
see what the difference is. Those infected periods are the same. And RIMPO got also a PS cap on it. And we click on it and we go to a weather station. And, sorry, yes. And I want to use this one, but that grower give me permission to do it. This I better use his. Okay. This is PS cap. And you see the difference. You saw the primary, the second infections. And with PS cap, you see infections all the time. There's again, you guys have to look on the apples on the secondary infections. And on the PS cap, you have to look. The blue line is where we are today, and you can see the good news is for you guys, there is no infection for the next period. Because you can stop spraying for a week, but have a look what the peers cap is doing. They're building up spores again, and that's really, and they're getting ready for your next infection. That's if we get another rain period, you have to cover yourself again with a spray cover. And that's really the big difference with apples. Apples, you saw the spores dropping, but peers, you see it. And this is what we call them basic. This is, um, this is what all the new research is in it, the scap basis. And again, have a look how does scap infections, this is the always sky high in peers. And I'll show you for the whole year. You can see that as well, entire year. This is what we call the basic program. This was in the past what the peer growers in Europe were using for peer scap, but we got them better data. And have a look. This is your problem. You see, it goes over sky high. There's a few smaller ones, but in general, peer scap is much more aggressive than apples. They, they're releasing much more spores and they actually have much more infections. You control them with the same chemicals, but it is definitely a little bit harder especially if the varieties like Williams are very high susceptible to keep that off your fruit. They don't feel this harder if you have a little bit of black spot on the pears. It is harder than apples. Okay. And then we have questions after this. this and we go to this one, apples cap, and I'll click, and I'll show you a spray program, and then it gives you an understanding why you can still have a little bit of black spot. And this is a spray program for nobody. That's mine. I put it just in, I spray it weekly with, with the chemicals that I know that Shepard and growers are using. And what RIMPO does, you can see, and I know that lots of people are on the phone who have seen RIMPO working, and you see the cover. And if you click on the second one, you can see this is your infections. The gray line is your cover. And if you see these infections here, we had more than 40%. There's those infections don't take place. If you are here with 20%, you can still have a little bit of infections when you, your fungus seed are dropping off too much. And I can show you when we could, we could put a kickback in and I will do that. Now I go back to my spray plan and I can, at treatment and we spray what is today for date the second that's good as we're going to spray tomorrow it's a good day six o'clock we spray during the day we can set the time we're going to put in um, uh, just anything but say that we do the ones who are, are used to sustain if there is any chemicals resistance in Australia, then it will be sustained, but I just put it in. You, if you do in, in kickback, you always put something with it. In this time, we, we, we use captain, you can use anything. This is just an example. And I have to move you guys out a little bit. Sorry for that, otherwise I can't. You click on pairs and I have to move this up, save to next. And again, we show the orchards and this, this is live. This is how you make a decision. And you say, I spray for nothing till I click on the second one. And then you see the sustain is kicking back and it would be ideal if you would do that. And then you got your new cover for your new infections here on the end. 
This RIMPRO is five days warning. You can use that and you can use which chemical are the best to kick back. The problem is if, if this chemical will be resistant, yeah, the kickback is not so. You rely, rely on the kickback, but it's maybe not perfect. But again, very if there is any chemical uh, system, um, I said the resistant would be sustained. It's probably used, I'm here 30 years in Australia. It's used all the time. And um, the like, for example, Bogart would do a better job. The steps on the fungicides, everybody understand it. I will do the entire year. I explain why people still can have black spot. I put in every week a spray in. I sprayed on Tuesday. I didn't look to the infections. I did every day, every Tuesday, I was spraying. I started with the copper, I did the sulfur, and you see there was no infection risk. And here I start with the polygram. Unfortunately, the polygram was not strong enough. And yet over here you can, I will actually click a little bit so that you can see a little bit better. There was only like an, um, this I spray weekly. I hope that everybody understand. See, I put a polygram out. I had heavy rain, washed down, and I have only less than 20% cover on it. This you can have an infection. Then I went the next week on Tuesday, I went out for the tire ram, did a good job on those infections. That was quite good covered. But just on the margin again, 10%, I could have still a little infection. I used a strawberry, but was very strong. We had a few big infections, hold back very good. Then I went the week after with Dalen. Unfortunately, they washed off again, but I still have more than almost 20% cover, but not ideal. I want to have 20% at least. And then this week, I was using Dayland the week after. On Tuesday, I sprayed every week. And unfortunately, what you see is the Dayland wash off. And again, I got not enough fungicide cover. It should be 20%. And I had only 10. And again, I had two periods where I can have PS cap. And I was spraying every week. And I'm in Tasmania, and I had Justin Grow, and he said, I spray every 10 days. And I, I saw just his black spot developing this. You can see how important it is to keep your covers up, but it is more important to have a choice and spray as possible. Calendar spraying, we say every week on a Tuesday is technically not working. And that's what I want to explain. Because people ask me, why do you have black spot? It's basically, you have to spray before the infection occurs. Because you need a warning program to make your way of it. That's it for me. And now you can ask questions.